Hey everybody, Jake here. And as of today, it is October 2nd, so the 30 inks, 30 days challenge is over. I'm kind of happy it's over. It was very frustrating only using one inked pen at a time, but I had fun with it. Um, so I'm going to kind of go over my experience with it, and I'm going to show you the results of the challenge. I did do a little bit of stuff, and I'll kind of roll in that footage as I go through and ramble. Um, this video is going to be exactly 30 minutes and 30 seconds long, so keep that in mind. Of course, you can already see the timestamp and all that stuff, but, you know. Let's go ahead and go over it. So first thing I had to do was clean my pens. Now, I had a little bit of fun with this. Um... I, normally I put most of the ink back into the um, the bottle, and I did that this time. I didn't record that part though. What I did do is I submerged all of them in water along with my camera and recorded the whole thing, so that was kind of cool. And then I recorded the actual cleaning process, which was much less dynamic, but I'll include both of those. But I wanted to do something a little bit fun with it. So with the challenge, of course, every day you would get a pen and you would take you know whatever color of ink you wanted for that day and fill it now you can do this at any 30 days randomly and just you know hashtag uh 30 inks 30 days and tag at ink journal on your instagram and it counts now with this you don't have to use 30 different pens i did because i have too many pens but you can just use, you know, two or three pens and rotate them, or you can do one pen for the entire 30 days. That will be exhausting though. If you're going to do one pen, I highly suggest going with like a cartridge or yeah, cartridge converter pen. Just to make cleaning a lot more simplistic for you because that's going to suck. And it kind of did suck. Um, I cleaned them all every day. Anyway, the difference is I didn't have to make sure they were like completely clean to where I could re-ink them up immediately with a new color. So it made it a little bit easier, you know, rotating through all of those pens. But it was a lot of fun. It made me really go back and appreciate some of the pens that I don't use so much anymore, like my Lamy Safari here. Um, and it made me realize how many inks I have <laughs> and that I, I probably need to be using, you know, some more colors than I do. I, I generally rotate. I don't use the same color in and a pen on repeat, but I have some that I come back to over and over, and those are definitely going to make my top five inks at the end of the year. But it was it was a nice experience. Um, a lot of community interaction, a lot more than I've done before on Instagram. I gained a lot of followers, started following a lot of new people, and it, it was just fun. I, I had a lot of fun doing it, and I will most definitely participate in a future event. Um, I know they did now you could do this at any time, like I mentioned, but I know they did officially like in June and um, this September. This September was the second one, and I had a lot of fun doing it. It's just something um, kind of exciting to do for an event. Now I did run into a bit of a a bit of a problem. I had planned to travel to Savannah for a few days, and I realized. Oh gosh, you're gonna have to carry your ink with you and your pens and not only that, but you're gonna have to clean them out like in the hotel. So that presented its own challenge. I didn't have my lighting with me or anything and the footage looks terrible, but I included the, the you know the bits that I did anyway. So those are the kind of outliers there. But I, I used a different pen every day, used a different ink every day, and I kept track of it in this little Rhodia um, color notebook that I have. Pick this up from Barnes and Noble on clearance. Now what I did was every day I would write the ink that I'm using and then the pen that I'm using it in. And I kept track of all of these. So let's go ahead and go over the list real quick. Um, my first day was Pilot Roche Zuku Amiiro with the Twisby Go. I really like that pen. That's a beautiful, beautiful, vibrant, punchy ink. And I think they match extremely well as far as color goes. The next one was another good match. It was Die Mine Autumn Oak and My Kara's Customs Decograph Monsoon, which is an amazing, amazing pen and a beautiful, beautiful kind of orange color. A lot of fun with that one. Um, next up was the Lamy Vibrant Pink and the Pelican M805 Ocean Swirl. I really like Lamy's Vibrant Pink ink from this year, and the Pelican is one of my favorite inks 
that I or pens. It's not ink. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's one of my favorite pens that I've picked up this year as well. Um, next was Diamond Pumpkin and the Levenger LTech 3.0. This is a pen that I don't use a lot, um, and with an ink that I do use a lot, and I really really enjoy that pen. Um, I'm probably going to try to use it more often now. It's it's very interesting. If you haven't watched my review of that, go check it out. It's a little bit old, but you know, it's it's a very, very nice pen if you can get it at a really good price. It's it's a lot of fun. Next up was Waterman Harmonious Green in the Pilot E95S. So the E95S is actually my wife's my wife's pen. But um I really, really like the nib on that thing. The ink capacity isn't amazing. Um and it's kind of eh as far as you know size and stuff goes but the nib is awesome once you post it it writes fantastic it's very comfortable to use I really really enjoy that pen and I don't use that ink a whole lot so I figured you know might as well next up was Organics Studio Twilight Blue in the Twisby VAC 700 um, a little bit of sheen in this not as much as you normally get from Organic Studio which doesn't really surprise me that that pens somewhat dry but the nib's super duper smooth. Next up was Pilot Hiroshizuku Fuyu Shogun. I have no idea, no idea how to pronounce that, so I'm hoping that's correct. In the Kaveco Skyline Sport, I don't use that pen much. I don't use that ink much, so I figured it'd be a fun combo. Um, I tried to dip into stuff that I don't carry on too regular of a basis and kind of mix it with the stuff that I'm used to, just to kind of break up the monotony. Next up was Bungbok, Bungbox Ink of the Witch, or Ink of Witch. And the pilot penmanship, I hate the pilot penmanship. <laughs> the nib is god awful, but the ink's very very pleasant. Next was Nemesign Solar Storm 1859 in my Twisby 580 all. Now I do have two Twisby 580 alls. This was the orange one. I really really like that pen, and if you don't have one yet, I highly suggest at least checking it out. It's fantastic. It's by far my favorite pen from the like fifty to seventy dollar range. Next up on day 10 was Diamine Soft Mint and my Pilot Quattro, which is this pen here. I think Soft Mint and the Quattro are like a super, super good match, and it, it's as close as I've gotten. I wish the Soft Mint were a slightly different colored, but it's not a huge deal. It's a very pleasant ink, and I really, really enjoy that pen. It's the only vintage pen that I keep in my collection and use regularly. And the last day for this page was day 11. It was Pilot Hiroshizuku Asagao and my pen BBS 323. That's my favorite um, ink to put in that pen because it really matches the swirls in it very, very well. Next up was another really, really nice combination. Bungbox June Bride and my Bungbox June Bride Kaveco All Sport. Um, pen is very sentimental to me. You can go watch the review of that, but it's... Very, very nice combo. I really, really love this ink. Then we have Twisby Eco T in that ugly, ugly yellow green color with Diamond Jade Green. Again, my wife's pen, but I think that ink matches it fairly well. Day 14 was Noodler's Apache Sunset and the Platinum Preppy. Not a huge fan of the Preppy, but it's decent, and I hate Apache Sunset. It's just maybe it's an issue with the batch I got. It's just so yellow. I know I'm not a big fan of yellow as it is, so it doesn't help anything. Day 15 was Jerbon Anker Rouge in the Platinum Machia Classic. Um, this is the only scented ink that we have in our collection, but it's 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 nice. It's kind of a semi-washed out red and not, not in a bad way. Then we had Stipula Bright, Bright Green in the Conklin Duraflex. So the day that I used Anker Rouge, we actually went up to Asheville, North Carolina to a shop called Origami Ink, and I picked up that bottle from there. It's my first Stipula ink, and I figured why not try out the Duraflex. Um, decent amount of shading. I expected a little bit more, but we'll do further testing, and I'll have a review of that soon. Day 17 was fun. So I used my Lamy Turquoise in my Lamy Safari. The Lamy Safari was my first fountain pen that I, I consider. I had one before, but it was a piece of crap and it fell apart like the day I got it. Um, the Lamy Safari was my first real fountain pen, and the first thing that I did with it, I, I'm i assuming uh, you know more, than, more people than just me have done this, but I was a little bit intimidated by bottled ink, and it's kind of an investment, so I just got some Lamy turquoise cartridges with my Lamy uh, Safari. 
So it was the first ink and pen combo that I really got to experience and I really enjoyed. It was a blast. I, I love that combo. Lamy Turquoise is gorgeous and the Lamy Safari is just a great pen. After that, it was Pilot Hiroshizuku Kosumosu and the Pilot Kakuno. So the Kakuno is also one that I got this month. It's it's not bad. Um, I actually like it quite a bit as far as the writing experience goes. Not a huge fan of the aesthetic, but it's obviously not geared towards me. It's more geared, to, more geared towards children. But it's it's a pretty good pen, and I really, really like Kosumosu. Next, it was Organic Studio Walden Pond Blue in the Sailor 1911 Royal Tangerine. I love this, love, love, love this orange pen. And I had run out of orange inks to put in it at the moment. I only have like three orange inks. I really need to step that up. So we're going to have to buy some more orange inks soon. But I figured a nice contrasting color would be Walden Pond Blue, and it is. It's kind of a nice uh, dark navy blue with a super bright orange pen. Really, really like that pen. Now let's move to, smooth out the nib quite a bit. Day 20 was Monteverde Purple Rain, which is a fantastic ink. And the Visconti Rembrandt, which is a terrible pen. Not a bad combo. Day 21, um, Diamine Ocker with the Jinhao 992. Okay, so on the weekends, I don't write that much, so I kind of cheated. Um, I didn't, well, it's not really cheating. I took pens or inks that I really didn't like. If I knew I wasn't going to be using a pen that much that day, that's when I did these combos. So this is a kind of ugly ink. Um, it's not awful, awful, but it's not great. I haven't used it that much. I need to do more with it, but that pen is terrible. You can go check out my review on that semi-controversial review. Diamond Wild Strawberry and the Lamy LX. This was my wife's Lamy LX. It was the Ruthenium, so like the darker one. Wild Strawberry with it was a it was a really really cool pairing. Then we had Noodler's Golden Brown in the Jinhao Shark Pen. It is an odd color. I prefer it over Patchy Sunset though. Jen House Shark Pen isn't terrible. Um, I'll have the review of that coming up very, very soon. Keep an eye out for that. It's going to be a fun one. But yeah, it wasn't, a, wasn't too bad of a combo, but meh. So I actually uh, messed up a little bit here. It says Noodler's Polar Blue, which was indeed the color that I used that day. But it also says Fountain Pen Revolution Dejeerling, which is not the pen that I have. I have the Guru. I have two of them. So I messed up there. That was my bad. I went and double-checked afterwards, and I was like, oh, crap. But I didn't want to mess up this kind of not so fancy document that I've been keeping, so I just left it. On um, polar blue is a bit more washed out than I thought it'd be, but it's a kind of a nice color. It's like an icy blue, and I think in a, a bit wetter pen, it'd be very interesting ink. The Guru itself, not a big fan of, um, of of either one of them, but we'll go over more of that in the review for them. Next day was was a fun one. Um, Pilot Hiroshizuku Momiji, which is a fantastic ink, and the Moon Man Wankai Mini, which is an okay pen. Just posted the review of that one. Go check that out. Shameless plug kind of thing. Um, very, very gorgeous pen, but writing experience isn't great, and that's kind of where it counts for me. Day 26 was Namiki Black and my Fountain Pen Revolution Guru. Now, I haven't done a review of Namiki Black yet, but it was my first bottled ink, so I probably should. Fantastic, fantastic black, though. I really, really like it a lot. Day 27 was Diamine Cerise in the Kako Retro, which is a fantastic pen. I saw this on Instagram, and I was like, okay, I gotta buy this, like, based off aesthetics alone. They're fairly cheap. They're like 10 bucks, And it's a really, really good rider with a very, very fine nib. You normally don't find super smooth, fine nibs, but this one's very, very nice. Really excited to do the review on that one. Day 28 was my Fountain Pen Revolution blue-black ink that came with the pens that I got from Mastrop with the Pilot Metropolitan. So new ink with a very, very reliable pen. It's a pretty good combo. So day 29 was actually an ink I picked up in Savannah. Um, I went to the shop. They didn't have anything I wanted, but I felt guilty just leaving, so I bought this ink. This is Jerbon Lee de Thie. I have, I have no idea how to pronounce that. I don't speak French. I'm super sorry. The Twisby Mini All, and it's a little difficult to see here, but it's a wonderful, wonderful shade of, like, a poop brown, which is amazing. <laughs> and then day 30, I went with uh, one of my favorite color combinations with a pen. It's Diamine Oxblood with the Platinum 3776 Century in red. That is just a great, 
great, great color combo. So that was interesting. So that whole month, what I would do is basically, I would get up, I would clean out the pen from yesterday, I would select my pen and ink for the day, and then I would record myself filling the pen, and then writing on this list, and then doing the next part, which I'm about to show you. And I'm not going to lie, it was a lot of work. This video has been a lot of work. Um, even the kind of quick editing that I did with it, compared to my normal stuff, has been a lot of work. That's what this month was for me. But it didn't have to be. I could, I could have just had fun with it, which is, you know, what I intend to do with the next one. I don't think I'm going to do quite so much, but it was it was very fun, very rewarding kind of thing. But it was taxing. <laughs> if you're not, if you're like me and you're not a huge fan of cleaning out your pens, you know it's going to be a little annoying. Now I do clean out my pens every single time, even if I'm going to use the exact same ink color. I'm a little bit paranoid about that. I spend a lot of money on these pens, especially some of them. But I want them to work. I want them to work consistently. But I I, I got to go through and try a ton of different nibs that I think the only one I didn't use, I didn't use a stub nib the whole time. But I used extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. You know, I used a flex nib. And some of them are a lot better than others. Um, the Gen How Shark Pen, I haven't gone over there, you know, I haven't done the review of it yet, but the nib isn't great. They're not that wonderful, and they are kind of a fine nib. But the fine nib on the Pilot Quattro is amazing. That's probably one of my worst reviews. Um, the audio is just so quiet. And I don't really have a way to fix it. I've been considering doing a re-review, so if you're interested in that, let me know. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous pen. I, I really want to buy more of these, but it's very difficult to find them in the um, alternate colors. I got really, really lucky getting this one. But it made me go through, and it made me appreciate my collection, which was something that I didn't expect. Um, I expected it to be a lot of work. I expected to have fun doing it. But I didn't think about you know going back through my collection and realizing what I have and really getting kind of an entire day to enjoy that stuff so you know I would go and I would take you know the Twisby Mini to work and I got to sit down with it and write with it and enjoy it I got to spend the day with this pen that I I don't use a ton it's my wife's pen but I got to sit down with it and I really really like this pen it's it's a really really nice pocket pen choice and the nibs are really really smooth the ergonomics are really really good and it holds a ton of ink which was another bit of a challenge so with cartridge converter they're fairly easy to fill up just a little bit and go pistons pistons look funny to me with just a little bit of ink but I, I tried my best to fill them up as little as possible so I tried to control the amount of ink that I put in the biggest challenge though apart from pistons was the eyedropper pins um, I used, I think, I think I only eyedroppered one, no, two, because I did the Platinum Preppy, and then I did the Moon Man Wonkai Mini, those, you know, I returned the ink to the bottle anyway, but it's a bit difficult, actually, um, let me find what day it was, I'm wondering if it was the Platinum Preppy, No, I remember what it was now. So I forget which one it was, but I accidentally put autumn oak in pumpkin's bottle or pumpkin and autumn oak, one of the two. Just just a little bit, just not a lot, but like a fraction of a milliliter. So I, I'm hoping that doesn't affect the ink overall. Luckily, I've got the reviews out for both of those already, so I'm not worried about contaminating the batch or anything. But I really enjoy both those colors. I don't mess them up, but that was... That was a downside of this. I was getting so... There's so many ink bottles in, on my bathroom sink. It's not even funny. There's a ton. Um, there were a ton on my desk, but now I've cut it down to just Momiji, which is the one that... Um, or one of the ones I'm using now. I inked up a bunch of pins for fall. So... I, I think I have five inked up now. That was another thing. I didn't realize how many pins I had inked up. I had like 15 pins inked up. I'm not going through and counting the ones that I cleaned. But there were a lot. A lot more than I thought. So I had to go through my collection and open all of them up and be like, hey, does this have any ink in it? You know, double check and make sure the converter wasn't filled up or anything like that. There were a lot more than I thought there were. And it was a little embarrassing to say the least. I was like, I'm not one of those people that inks up 
30 pins. No, but you're not far off. <laughs> um, typically, on, on an average day, I carry about five pins with me. I carry one of my rickshaw bags, pin sleeve. I carry my Kaveco Lilliput in my pocket with my wallet. And then I carry three pins in my Notco Sinclair. I don't know why I had 15 pins inked, but I did. And some of them were stuff that I didn't even use. Just like pins that I'd done for review and just put them away and never touch them again. Those were, you know, there were several of those. There weren't a ton, but there were like three or four that I was just like, I, I don't use this pen. Why do I have this inked even? And it also made me appreciate how few international or standard international converters I have. I think I have like three, and I should have way more than that. So it was a little difficult transferring over converters and getting all those cleaned and all that stuff. And converters suck to clean. They really do. One thing that helped me out quite a bit is back at the Atlanta Pan Show, I purchased a bulb syringe and kind of, uh, you, you can fill it with water, stick it in the back of a, uh, of a pen. Let me show you with, uh, with the sailor because it actually works on the sailor. So what you can do is you can take the pen, you can remove the converter and stick the bulb syringe tip down in there. Make sure it's fit all the way and you just press water through it and it pushes through a massive volume of water at a very, very quick pace. And it, it's amazing for cleaning out your uh, your nib and feed stuck in the section there. It it gets in there very, very deep, flushes out 99% of the ink, if not all of it. And it, it just sped up this whole process for me. I very, very much appreciate that. You'll see me using that a ton in the cleaning and I use that as I went back through and cleaned all my pens. The, the cleaning that I have in there is just the initial day. So it's not all the cleaning for all the pens I did. That would have been exhausting. So those, those two cleaning parts are just from that first day when I was like, well, it wasn't even the first day. It was um, August 31st, I think. I went through and cleaned out all my pens. But yeah, that was, that was interesting. So the next thing I did is after I you know, wrote down on my list, I went through and I had a lot of fun with this. This turned out really cool, I think. Um, I realized that I was using, you know, I was doing the 30 inks, 30 days challenge, but I realized that 30 and then inks is 10 letters. 30 days is 10 letters. But I was going to use 30 pens, so I wanted to throw that in there. So I had exactly the right amount to go through and do a different color for all of these. But I had quite a lot of fun with it. If I'd thought about it, I probably would have started off which I may do this in the next one. Um, kind of start off with my reds and then go on you know, all the way down to ending in the um, violets, blue indigo violet. Yeah, so kind of done like a rainbow pattern with this. I think that would have came out really, really cool. This kind of mismatch pattern isn't bad. And, you know, some of the letters look somewhat similar, like this brown and this dark red, but I think it, it turned out really, really cool. So every day I would just go and write one letter. And I recorded that as well, so I'll go and roll in that footage. It, it came out very, very nice. But I, I had a really good time doing this. I highly encourage you to do it if you do have inks. Um, you don't have to use full bottles. I, I used samples a couple days. I, I probably would have had enough full bottles to do it, but you know, you can use all samples if you want to. So if you have 30 samples, you know, there you go. If not, um, Ink Journal does actually do like a, a monthly pen or ink, um, like ink sample box. Now it is a little bit pricey, to be honest. Um, at least I think it is. So it's, let's see. So it's like $14 and you get seven ink samples, which is about two bucks a piece. Now, I don't know about shipping. Let me actually check and see how much the shipping is. But yeah, you can pick up um, ink samples from a lot of different stores. Um, you can pick them up from Van Ness, you can pick them up from Goulet, and they they range, you know, from a little over a dollar to, you know, almost three, just depending. I think shipping is free on this. So $14 it comes up to about $2 an ink sample which isn't a super awesome value, but it's not bad. So you, you could get, you could probably get 30 ink samples for around $35. 
um, if you're very um, picky about kind of what you do with them. Um, and as an alternative to that 7 inks for $14, for $25, you can get 17 inks. And these are all 2 milliliter bottles as standard with ink samples. You can also get these um, 7 inks with a surprise. I have no idea what that is, but it's, you know, it's there. But they I'll leave an, a, a link down to inkjournal.com in the description. Okay, let's see. Oh, so, so there is shipping, so it's two ninety five. dollars So depending on how many inks you buy, you may come out cheaper getting them from like Goulet or Van S or something like that. But, you know, if, if you're watching this channel, you probably have a decent ink supply already. You know, three or four at least, I imagine. But uh, I think this is a good chance for people who don't have a lot of ink to purchase up a bunch of ink samples, If you know, if you have the funds. And just go through and try a bunch of different colors that you never have before. Um, I think that'd be really, really cool. I may do that for the, for the next one that they do. I may just purchase 30 random ink samples. Um, and go through and try a bunch of inks that I've, that I've never tried before or try to at least. But I think, I think that'd be really, really fun because with inks, you know, brand to brand, you can kind of see how they're going to compare, but you're never really sure. So I think that'd be really fun to maybe go through with maybe just one pin this time. I don't know. Uh, that's asking a lot. Maybe we'll see. And then just go through 30 different inks. So I may try that for the uh, for the next one. I think that'd be a lot, a lot of fun to to go through and do. But, but this has been fairly enjoyable. It's been exhausting. It's been a little infuriating at times. And what surprised me the most is it was a little stressful. And where the stress came from was only having one fountain pen with me. I love fountain pens. I love them, but they're not the most reliable things in the world. You know, when you get up to a really high price range, they can be. Some pens are just built reliably, and I've never had any issues with them. Some pens are fairly unreliable, and you can never really tell. So using all these for a day, only one pen carried with me, with, you know, filled, it's... It was a little stressful. I was constantly worried about, hey, what if this pen stops writing? And I did have some writing issues from some pens, but it, it wasn't bad enough to where I just had to stop using it and switch over to a ballpoint or anything crazy like that. But it was the threat was present and it was there, and I was worried. Now some of you may, you know, not worry about that at all, but I've had enough issues with fountain pens to know that they can be a bit of a diva and they can cause some problems. So some pens, it, I don't think it was this one, but some pens had materials get stuck between the tines and I had to actually take a, I think it was the tip of a sticky note because I was at work and run it through to knock that out and then the pen wrote just fine. But I ran into that, that was terrifying because when I, when I was using these, I wanted to use them for the whole day at least the ones that I was taking like on a day where I'm actually writing all day. And the thought of me having to switch over was kind of frustrating. But yeah, fountain pens can be a bit a bit touch and go sometimes, but I didn't really have any large issues. So while the stress never quite died down, it, it subsided a bit. So I don't think I'll be that worried about, you know, fountain pens not being reliable again. And I tried to pick pens that were reliable pens that I knew worked, pens that I appreciated and really enjoyed writing with. I also tried to go back and take pens that I really didn't like, like the pilot penmanship, penmanship, and go back and try them. Like, okay, why didn't I like this? Do I still dislike it? And in general, it was a resounding yes. I found some pens that I thought I enjoyed that I don't so much anymore. And a bunch of stuff in between. It was, it was a bit of a learning experience. And I had a lot of fun with it. Well, I'll go ahead and wrap this up. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope you all enjoyed my, my rambling about my experience. And I hope you all participate in the next one. I will be sure to make an announcement on my uh, Instagram 
I'll try to do one on YouTube as well of when the next one is when I hear about it. I'll try to keep track of all that. And I, I genuinely hope that if you participated, you had fun. I, I know I did. So let me know, you know, down at the bottom if you, if you participated. What was your experience? What did you think about it? Write me an essay for all I care. I'll go through and read it no matter what. But um, I hope you all had fun. Hope you all have a good day. And thanks for watching, guys. Bye.